Hello dear students, glad to meet you again in this session. In this session 2.6, we are going to discuss the two developments that leads towards the quantum mechanical model of the atom from chapter 2, structure of atom in grade 11. Before getting into today's concept, let us recall all the topics that we have discussed in the previous sessions. In session 2.1, we have discussed the discovery of subatomic particles and its characteristics. In session 2.2, we have discussed J.J. Thomson's atom model, Rutherford atom model and its drawbacks. In session 2.3, we have discussed the dual nature of electromagnetic radiation, black body radiation, photoelectric effect and electromagnetic spectrum. In session 2.4, we have discussed about continuous spectrum, emission spectrum, absorption spectrum, atomic spectrum and line spectrum of hydrogen atom. In session 2.5, we have discussed the postulates and explanation of Bohr's atom model for hydrogen atom, explanation about the line spectrum of hydrogen atom and limitations of Bohr's model. Learning outcomes. Students, at the end of this session, you will be able to derive expression for the wave particle duality of matter, compute the significance of de Broglie's wave, explain quantization of angular momentum and de Broglie concept, explain Davison and Germer experiment, and explain Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and illustrate its significance. Wave particle duality of matter. In 1905, Albert Einstein suggested that light has dual nature. In 1924, de Broglie, a French physicist, extended this concept and proposed that all forms of matter showed dual character. He proposed that as the photons has momentum as well as wavelength, electrons should also have momentum as well as wavelength. And he derived the relationship between wavelength and momentum of a material particle. Derivation of de Broglie relationship. De Broglie combined the following two equations of energy given by Planck's quantum hypothesis and Einstein's mass energy relationship of which one represents the wave character and other represents the particle nature. From these two equation 1 and 2, we can write h nu is equal to mc square since the left hand side of both the equation are equal. And we know that nu is equal to c by lambda. So we can write this above equation as h into instead of nu we can write c by lambda is equal to mc square. Rearranging this equation, we get lambda is equal to h into c upon mc square. We can cancel one c in the numerator and in the denominator, which gives lambda is equal to h by mc, where m is the mass of the photon and c is the velocity of the particle. For a particle of matter with mass m and moving with a velocity v, the equation 3, that is lambda is equal to h by mc, can also be written as lambda is equal to h by mv, where h is the Planck's constant, m is the mass of the particle, and v is the velocity of the particle. Instead of the velocity of the photon, here in this equation 4, we have written it as velocity of the particle v. And this equation is called de Broglie equation. We know that mass into velocity is nothing but momentum. So we can write this equation as lambda is equal to h by p, where p is the momentum of the particle. Here we have to note that lambda and m are inversely proportional to each other. Significance of de Broglie wave. According to de Broglie, every object in motion have wave character. This wave character has some restrictions on how precisely we can express the position of an electron or any other 
small moving particles. This is due to the reason that unlike particles, waves do not occupy a well-defined position in a space, but they are delocalized. The wave nature of matter for ordinary objects has no significance because the wavelengths associated with the ordinary objects are too short because of their large masses, so their wave properties cannot be detected. On the other hand, the wave nature of microscopic particles or sub-microscopic particles like electrons have observable wavelength and these wavelengths are associated with electrons and other subatomic particles with very small mass can also be detected experimentally. This shows that de Broglie concept is more significant for microscopic particles whose wavelength can be measured. We can understand this concept clearly by doing the following calculation. In this problem, we are going to calculate the wavelength of a macroscopic particle, for example, a ball of mass 0.1 kilogram moving with a velocity 10 meter per second. According to de Broglie equation, we know that lambda is equal to h upon mv, where h is the Planck's constant 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second. Instead of joules, we are going to write kilogram meter square seconds to the power of minus 2 in this equation. By substituting the value of h, m and v in this expression, we get 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 kilogram meter square. I have written second inverse two times because in this unit we have seconds to the power of minus 2 and this seconds I have written here upon 0.1 kilogram into 10 meter per second. We can cross this kilogram in the numerator and in the denominator. We can cross one meters in the numerator and one meter in the denominator. We can cross second inverse, one second inverse in the numerator and in the denominator. Second inverse means one upon second. So we can cross this seconds and this seconds in the numerator. So we can get the value 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 meters upon 0.1 into 10. We know that 0.1 into 10 is nothing but 1. So the value of lambda is equal to 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 meters. This wavelength is too small to be detected. Therefore, macroscopic bodies have predominantly particle character. In this problem, we are going to calculate the wavelength of the microscopic particle electron. The mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kilogram and they have given the kinetic energy is 3.0 into 10 to the power of minus 25 joules. We know the formula kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. By rearranging this equation, we get the velocity v is equal to 2 into kinetic energy upon m whole to the power of half. By substituting the values of Ke, kinetic energy and M mass, in this expression we get 2 into 3.0 into 10 to the power of minus 25 joules upon 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kilogram. Instead of joules, we can write the unit as kilogram meter square and second to the power of minus 2. We can cross this kilogram in the numerator and in the denominator. By simplifying this value, we get 0 0.6593 into 10 to the power of 6 meter square second to the power of minus 2, the whole to the power of half. If we move this decimal four digits to the right hand side, then we have to add minus 4 in the exponent, right? So 6 minus 4 we have written. 6593 into 10 to the power of 6 minus 4 meter square second to the power of minus 2 whole to the power of half. If we again simplify this value, we get 812 meter per second as the velocity of electron. Just now we have calculated the velocity of electron is 812 meter per second and we know that the mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kilogram. Now we can calculate the wavelength of the electron using the expression lambda equal to h upon mv. 
where h is the Planck's constant 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joule second and m mass of the electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kilogram and velocity is 812 meter per second. Instead of joules, we can use the unit kilogram meter square instead of second to the power of minus two, we have written second inverse two times and this second I have written here. Now we can cancel the kilogram in the numerator and in the denominator and one meter in the numerator and one meter in the denominator and second inverse in the numerator and second inverse in the denominator. We can cancel second inverse and seconds in the numerator. If we simplify this value, we get 0 0.0008967 into 10 to the power of minus 34 as it is I have written. And when this 10 to the power of minus 31 comes to the numerator, it will become plus 31, right? And the unit is meter we have written here. When we move this decimal point six places to the right hand side, then we can write this value in the exponent form as 896.7 into 10 to the power of minus six. If we simplify this exponent form, we get 10 to the power of minus nine meters. So the value is 896.7 into 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. We know that 10 to the power of minus 9 is nothing but nanometer. So we can write this value as 896.7 nanometer, which is the wavelength of the electron. From this value, we know that the wavelength of electron is of observable length. Thus, it is quite evident that de Broglie concept is more significant for microscopic or sub-microscopic particle like electron whose wavelength can be measured. The next concept is quantization of angular momentum. According to de Broglie concept, the electron revolves around the nucleus exhibit both particle and wave nature. In order for the electron wave exist in phase, the circumference of the orbit which I have represented in red line should be the integral multiple of the electron wave. In order for the electron wave exist in phase, the circumference of the orbit which I have represented in red line should be the integral multiple. Here integral multiple n equal to 6. Integral multiple of the wavelength of the electron wave circumference of the orbit should be equal to n lambda. Circumference of the orbit is 2 pi r, right? So 2 pi r equal to n lambda. We know that lambda is equal to h upon mv. So we can substitute this lambda by h upon nv. So the equation will become 2 pi r equal to n h by mv. By rearranging this equation, we get mvr equal to nh by 2 pi. We know that mvr is nothing but the angular momentum. So the angular momentum is equal to nh by 2 pi. And this equation was already predicted by Bohr. Hence, de Broglie and Bohr's concept are in agreement with each other. When you look at this picture, this wave is not fit into the circumference of this orbit. Here, 2 pi r is not equal to n pi. So, this kind of wave is not allowed. Coming to this picture, this wave fit into the circumference of the orbit. Here, 2 pi r is equal to n lambda. So, this kind of wave is allowed. Here in this picture, the integral multiple n equal to 5 because we could see five waves in the circumference of this orbit. Coming to this picture, this wave fit into the circumference of the orbit. Here, 2 pi r equal to n lambda. Here, n equal to 3 because we have three waves here. In this picture also, this wave fit into the circumference of this orbit. Here, 2 pi r equal to n lambda. Here, n is equal to 4 since we have four waves here. Now, we can verify the wave nature of electron through this Davison and Germer experiment. De Broglie concept of wave nature of electron was verified by Davison and Germer in 1927. They subjected a stream of electrons emitted from a tungsten filament to the influence of a strong electric field so as to accelerate the speed of the electrons. When these electrons 
are made to strike against the nickel crystal as grating a concentrated dark and bright rings were formed on the screen this diffraction pattern of electrons by crystal was similar to that observed for x rays since x rays have wave character therefore the electrons must also have wave character associated with them moreover the wavelength of the electrons determined by the diffraction experiments were found to be in agreement with the values calculated from de broglie equation now let us verify the particle nature of electron by illustrating the following experiment de broglie concept of particle nature of electron was illustrated by cathode ray experiment which we have discussed earlier in 2.1 session in this experiment if electron strikes the screen coated with zinc sulfide it produces a spot of light known as scintillation one electron produces only one scintillation point this means striking electron must be localized and not spread out like waves in other words this suggested that an electron behaves like a particle the particle nature of the electrons is also demonstrated by another cathode ray experiment in which the stream of electrons can rotate a paddle wheel placed in the path these two cathode ray experiment shows us electrons possess particle nature so from the above experiment davison and germer and this cathode ray experiment it is very clear that electrons possess dual nature that is wave character and as well as particle character The next important concept is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Werner Heisenberg, a German physicist in 1927, stated uncertainty principle, which is the consequence of dual behavior of matter and radiation. According to Heisenberg, it is impossible to measure simultaneously the exact position and the exact momentum, that is, the velocity of a subatomic particle. such as electron mathematically uncertainty principle can be given by the equation delta x into delta p suffix x is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi we know that p that is the momentum is equal to mass into velocity by substituting this value in the above equation we get delta x into delta mv suffix x is greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi by rearranging this above equation we get delta x into delta v x is greater than or equal to h by 4 pi into m where delta x is equal to uncertainty in position delta p is equal to uncertainty in momentum m is the mass of the particle and delta v is the uncertainty in velocity and this sign greater than or equal to refers that the product delta x into delta p x is greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi since the product delta x into delta p suffix x is constant this means delta x is inversely proportional to delta p this expression tells us if uncertainty in position delta x is less then the uncertainty in momentum delta p would be large let us understand the heisenberg uncertainty principle through this picture we all know that we could see object only when light falls on it and it scatters the light for scattering takes place the wavelength of light should be of the same order as that of the size of the object if the object is of a reasonable size then the impact of the light does not affect the velocity or the position of the object but in the case of microscopic particles like electrons the striking photon causes a large displacement from its original path and this result in the change in the velocity and the 
momentum of the particle. If high energy photon or extremely small wavelength falls on this electron, it changes both the direction and the speed of the electron. On the other hand, if a longer wavelength photon falls on this electron, it does not change the direction or the speed of the electron since it has less energy. So the velocity of the electron could be determined accurately, but the position of the electron cannot be determined accurately as the uncertainties of these two quantities that is the position and momentum that is the velocity of the particle are inversely proportional to each other. If the position is determined accurately then the velocity or the momentum of the electron cannot be determined accurately. So the uncertainty principle has negligible effect on macroscopic object and significant effect on the microscopic particle like electron. To understand this principle, first let us calculate the uncertainty of a macroscopic particle and then the uncertainty of a microscopic particle that is an electron in hydrogen atom. Before discuss about the Heisenberg's concept through the illustration of the example problem, let us list out the significance of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Heisenberg uncertainty principle rules out the concept of definite path or the trajectories of electrons proposed by Niels Bohr. It is impossible to determine accurately the position and momentum of a subatomic particle such as electron in order to define the trajectory path of an electron. And it is possible to predict only the probable region to find an electron in a given space. Thus, Heisenberg's replaced Bohr's concept. And the next important significant of Heisenberg uncertainty principle is the effect of Heisenberg's principle is significant only for the motion of the microscopic objects and it is negligible for that of a macroscopic objects. Let us see this example problem which illustrate Heisenberg's uncertainty principle for mass of reasonable size. Consider a body of mass 1 milligram that is 10 to the power of minus 6 kilogram. By applying Heisenberg's principle, the minimum product of delta x that is uncertainty in position and delta v uncertainty in momentum may be calculated as follows. Solution. In the problem, they have given a body of mass 1 milligram that is 10 to the power of minus 6 kilogram is given. From Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, we get the expression delta x into delta v equal to h upon 4 pi m. If we substitute the value of h Planck's constant pi 3.14 and the mass 10 to the power of minus 6 kilogram in this expression we get 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34. Instead of joules we can use the unit kilogram meter square and second to the power of minus 2. Instead of using second to the power of minus 2 we have written second inverse two times here and this second I have written here upon when we multiply 4 into 3.1 we get the answer 12.56 into 10 to the power of minus 6 kilogram. We can cross this kilogram in the numerator and in the denominator and we can cross second inverse and second in the numerator. When this 10 to the power of minus 6 comes to the numerator, it will become plus 6. If we simplify this value, we get 0 0.527 into 10 to the power of minus 34 as it is. And when this minus 6 comes to the numerator, it will become plus 6. And the unit is meter square per second. We can write this value approximately. It is equal to 10 to the power of minus 28 meter square per second. If we simplify this exponent form, we get 10 to the power of minus 28. So the product delta x uncertainty in the position and delta v uncertainty in velocity is approximately equal to 10 to the power of minus 28 meter square per second. This value is too small and hence it can be neglected. Let us see an another example problem which illustrate Heisenberg's uncertainty principle for subatomic particle like electron. Calculate the uncertainty in the velocity of electron in hydrogen atom. 
assuming that the position of the electron in this orbit is determined with the accuracy of 0.5 percentage of the radius already we know that the bore radius for first orbit is 0.529 and strong solution first let us calculate the uncertainty in position given bore radius of first orbit is 0.529 angstrom that they have given and they have given the accuracy of the radius is 0.5 percentage since they have given the accuracy is 0.5 percentage of the radius to find the uncertainty in the position we have to divide 0.5 by 100 into 0.529 angstrom we know that 1 angstrom is equal to 10 to the power of minus 10 meters when we simplify these values we get 0.002645 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters if we move the decimal three places to the right hand side then we have to add minus 3 in the exponent form so the answer will become 2.645 into 10 to the power of minus 13 meters and that is the uncertainty in the position rearranging heisenberg's uncertainty principle delta x into delta p is greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi we get the expression delta v is greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi into m into delta x since we know that momentum p is equal to m into delta v by substituting the value of h planck's constant pi m and delta x in this expression we get 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34 instead of joules we can write kilogram meter square and second to the power of minus 2 instead of second to the power of minus 2 here we have written second inverse two times and this second i have written here upon when we simplify this value we get 114.42 into 10 to the power of minus 31 kilogram into 2.645 into 10 to the power of minus 13 m that is the value of delta x we can cross this kg in the numerator and in the denominator and 1 m in the numerator and 1 m in the denominator we can cancel this second inverse and second in the numerator if we simplify this values we get 0.02189 into 10 to the power of minus 34 as it is i have written and this 10 to the power of minus 31 and 10 to the power of minus 13 if you add the powers we get 10 to the power of minus 44 when this 10 to the power of minus 44 comes to the numerator it will become 10 to the power of plus 44 and this meter per second unit we have written here when we move this decimal point two digits to the right hand side then we can write this value in the exponent form as 2.189 into 10 to the power of minus 2 if we simplify this exponent form we get 10 to the power of 8 so the value will become 2.189 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second delta v the uncertainty in the velocity of the electron is quite large and it is comparable with the velocity of the light which is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second at this high level of uncertainty it is difficult to find out the exact velocity therefore it is not possible to predict the trajectory of an electron in an atom from this calculation we know that the uncertainty principle has negligible effect for macroscopic objects and becomes significant only for microscopic objects such as electrons students let's recall all the topics that we have discussed in this session in this session we have discussed about the wave particle duality of matter significance of de broglie's waves and quantization of angular momentum and de broglie concept we have discussed the davison and germer experiment heisenberg uncertainty principle and its significance hope this session was very useful to you see you soon in the next session have a nice day thank you Thank you.